Hello and welcome back to another video on my channel. Take a look at what I've bought now. I bought another car, I've done it again. I seem to be doing that too often. It is a bit of an addiction, I must admit, but look at what I've bought. Isn't it just beautiful? It is, it is gorgeous. It is Swedish engineering at its finest. And this car will still work perfectly today, even though it was made in 2006, because it was built by Saab. And I have always, always wanted a Saab. I can remember in 2011, when Top Gear said, Saab has gone bankrupt. You'll never be able to buy a new Saab ever again. I remember from that day, little kid, <laughs> I remember thinking, one day I'm going to own a Saab. And that day happens to be today. It is amazing that everything works on this car. When you buy a used car, lots of things do not work. Lots of things are broken. The car will normally have problems. This is probably the most honest used car that I have ever bought. And that really is saying something, not only for the Saab build quality, but the people who own them. The people who own Saabs care about their cars and they care about Saabs. So if you're gonna buy a used Saab, most of them aren't going to be ropey because Saab owners just care. Saab owners know that they've bought a reliable, durable car, smart people buy Saabs, and smart people do not run cars into the ground. Well, I take that back, actually, because <laughs> loads of people run cars into the ground, but what I'm trying to say is most Saab owners really take very good care of their cars. Now, this car is no exception. Let's just take a little look around the bodywork here, because for a car of this age, there is really no significant wear and tear, which is actually quite impressive. Even the roof is in extremely good condition. Yes, 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 it needs a clean. The whole car needs a clean. I didn't have time. I just wanted to come and film this video. But the fact that the whole roof is in such, you know, good condition is honestly pretty impressive. And you know, I mean, it's a convertible, I know, and it's Christmas time, I know, most people aren't stupid enough to go out and buy, you know, convertibles at Christmas, but I am, I am a different breed, okay? Now, um, yeah, it really does want to clean, there's lots of green growing out of this car, um, and the wheels are a little bit curved, they really need a good clean, but... I just wanted to do a review on this car while I had the chance. And there is a lot to say about a car of this quality for this money. Now, it really does drive like a nice, well-built car. To me, I've always thought of Saabs as being quite heavy and obviously they're not known for their handling. Um, but you don't buy a Saab because you want a car that handles well, like an MX-5, which I just made a review on, so go and look at that if you want a car that handles well and feels more like a sports car. This car is purely a convertible. This is not a sports car. Yes, it's got 150 horsepower. Yes, it's a turbo. It is a diesel. It's nice and torquey. It's got, a, it's got enough power to get you by. You know, it's got more than enough power, really. But you do not buy this car because you want to go quick or because you want something that handles nicely. You buy this car because you want a Saab. You want, you know, a, a luxurious, you know, drive down the road. Because when you drive a Saab, you don't feel the bumps. You just feel the, the whoosh. <laughs> so that is why you would buy a Saab. This is quite a big car, especially from my point of view right now. Coming from an MX-5 up to a car like this, you know, it's... There is a lot more space in the cabin. It feels a lot more spacious. Um, obviously, this, this car is, you know, not quite as modern as the Mark III Miata, I would say. It does feel a bit more dated. But let's just talk about styling for a second, because I think that this car has aged exceptionally well. Um, I think it, it still looks interesting. It still looks smart. You know, it doesn't... I don't look at this car and think, oh my God, that thing's ancient. I look at this and I think, yeah, you know, they did a good job back in whenever this model came out. But the Saab 9.3 has always been a car I've wanted to own, just, just to see what it drives like. And, you know, we'll talk about that more on the test drive. But from the exterior um, appearance, I think this car is lovely, particularly this blue metallic paint. Now, yes, this one needs some sort of... I need to... Um, I need to recondition the plastics in place. I need to recondition some of the plastics in places on this car. But other than that, the paintwork is lovely. You can see a really nice, obviously when it's clean, there is a really nice flake in this metallic paint and it really is a nice color. And another great thing about the Saab 9.3 is that the uh, the paint continues on the interior. So you've got body colored um, interior panels here, which look absolutely gorgeous. And it really, it really is a nice car. But the reason why you would buy a Saab 9.3 convertible is because it is convertible. You would not buy a convertible without wanting a convertible. And of course, 
this can drop the roof and that makes for a very interesting experience. Um, I haven't driven this car very much with the roof down mainly because right now it is about minus one, it is absolutely freezing. It doesn't look it I know but it is about freezing right now and that is cold enough not to want to take the roof down. But you know the, this, this car looks good from any angle really and a 1.9 diesel you know it has enough power it's pretty economical and the fuel tank on this is absolutely massive it, it is a really big fuel tank i put 30 pounds worth of diesel and it barely even dented it so you know you could you could fill this up with diesel all day i don't know how many miles you could do on a tank like this but i imagine it would do five six hundred because the tank is massive which is it, that's good because i do think of this car as a cruiser you know it's a fairly big diesel engine with um, a six speed manual six speed you know it's you can cruise down the motorway all day in this now one of the main reasons why you would buy a saab is the interior now let me show you around the interior so first of all you know it's all it's all decent build quality in here it's no bentley but it is a nice build quality in here everything is just more than passable i would say and everything has also held together very well over the years nothing sort of hanging off and not working everything works fine and that really does say a lot about the saab build quality but again the reason why you buy a car like this is so you can take the roof down oh yeah <laughs> So I would estimate that this probably takes 20 or so seconds, which, you know, you can't really complain, can you? I don't know if you can do it on the move. I don't know any of those details, but it seems all right. It gives you a little beep when it's done. And now look, you have a Saab convertible. Look, isn't it wonderful? You could drive around pretending that you're Barbie and Ken. And I just, ah, uh, I think this car looks so good from these angles. And especially if you take all of the windows down, which are they automatic? They are. Can you believe the windows are automatic? It just knows, doesn't it? For 2006. I mean, look at this. And the way that the, the paint continues on the inside of the car, like I was saying before, it really makes it look very, very special. Like, ah, oh, this is a good looking convertible. Wow. Anyway, yes, we get it. The interior looks all right. You know, minor wear and tear. This car's only done 72,000 miles, which for its year is really low mileage. So again, everything just works. You've got back seats with a little bit of legroom. Honestly, you probably could just about fit two small adults in the back here. So it is a four seater convertible and it's also a six speed motorway cruiser. I mean, what more could you ask from a car? Like, this does everything. This does cruising to the beach in the summer. It does long work road trips. Whatever you need, this can do it. It's reliable. It's Saab. It's Swedish. It's cool. It is very cool. So if you want a cool car that you can take the roof off and you can, you know, cruise down the motorway, um, I think this is the perfect car for you. I think any there's no real age limit on this car. Young people, it's pretty good on insurance, to be honest. Really not bad at all. Um, the tax isn't that high, it's like mid-bracket, I can't remember the price, but overall it's a pretty cheap car. I picked this one up for um, just under £1,200, 72,000 miles, full service history. It's a Saab, it's a good car. There's not much more to say about it really. Let's take it for a drive. Come on, let's go. Okay, so welcome to the inside of my land barge. So this is a, a Saab 9.3 Linear. So it's not the uh, it's not the top of the range model, but it's pretty good. Okay, so while I'm waiting at this red light, what can I say about this Saab? Okay, so the most special bit about this car, I feel, is the interior because you're sat in this fighter jet's cockpit right here. I've got all the instrument panels aimed towards me i've got the center console like aimed towards me it feels like i'm in a fighter jet right now and saab they do make fighter jets so it's unsurprising really <laughs> but i've got all the dials in front of me that are in really cool shapes and everything's a sort of dark stealthy color i just it just feels so cool sat here with all of this all of this fighter jet-esque around me and the steering it's not I wouldn't describe it as direct, but I wouldn't describe it as disconnected either. It just, it feels like an early 2000s average car, really. There's there's not much weight to it. It's quite light steering, but you can sort of feel that it's moving a fair bit of weight. Obviously, the car isn't a light car. You know, the Saab 9.3 was 
fairly heavy compared to the competitors. I'm pretty sure it was heavier than the BMW 3 Series and stuff like that. So it's not a light car, but the steering really doesn't feel bad at all. I mean, you could park this pretty easily in a, in a car park. It really isn't bad. The turning circle feels pretty good too. So you can take it around town. You can take it down the motorway. Saabs were, don't get me wrong, Saabs were quite complicated cars back in the day. Saab was renowned for over-engineering everything. I mean, that's why the company went bust in the end, because they just spent so much money on their cars and on development and, and design and all that, that, you know, they just, they weren't left with any profit because they just focused on making such a good car. And considering how nice this car feels to drive after so many years, I'm very glad that they spent all that money on making it as good as they possibly could. It's such a shame that Saab aren't around today to continue making cars. I mean, to be honest, the diesel, okay, it doesn't sound very cool. It's a big hunking diesel, you know, what do you expect? But honestly, it's got enough power. It feels nice enough to drive that I wouldn't really mind owning a diesel like this. Of course, I'm not going to be keeping this car. I'm going to be selling this, but you know, it just, I wouldn't necessarily go out only looking for a petrol. I mean, yeah, I know diesels have more sort of stuff that can go wrong, like turbos and DPFs, but the, the fuel economy on this diesel really is good. So I'd almost say it was worth it. I never used to be a diesel person, but you know, I could see myself driving this car and, and just, you know, doing lots of miles in it because it's very comfortable. It's the sort of car that you can just get in for the first time and just drive normally. It's just so easy. Everything makes sense. It feels like every other car that was made in the early 2000s, in a way. It doesn't feel that unique to drive, actually. It's, it's a fairly plain driving experience, which some people might not like. You know, some people want a really unique feeling car, like a Miata. But this car doesn't feel that unique to drive, to be honest. It just, it feels well built, it feels dependable, it feels reliable, and everything makes sense and everything works. There's not really a lot more to say about this car, to be honest, from a driving perspective. You know, it's, it's not that engaging to drive, it's, it's not a driver's car, but it is a Saab, and, you know, that makes it cool. Like I said near the start of this video, I have wanted to own a Saab for a long time, just to own a bit of history, because these cars aren't going to be around for that long. So, if you're interested in cars and you've never owned a Saab, you know, I'd take the opportunity to get something like this. It's not a lot of money, it doesn't cost a lot to insure, it doesn't cost a lot to tax. You know, if you need a dependable runaround that's not going to break the bank, you know, this is going to be that. But again, it's not, it's not driver-centric, although it is really, really cool to drive at night. Like, last night I was driving this car around town, and I put the night panel option on the dashboard, and, you know, like I said, it just lights up the... Um, the speedometer and everything else is turned off so you've got no other lights on in the in the in the dashboard in the cockpit anywhere there's no other lights it's just just purely the speedo and it really does make it feel like you're driving a fighter jet and i love that okay so i'm there's a roundabout coming up and i'm going to take it you know a little quicker than maybe i should and just see how the car feels yeah it feels to be honest, it, I know a lot of people say, oh, these cars are barges and they, they feel wallowy. It doesn't feel that bad. It doesn't, it doesn't feel as bad as people make it out to be. I mean, yes, it's not a sporty car. It hasn't got a sporty gearbox. You know, all the throws are quite long, but it does not feel as bad as a lot of reviews I've watched. A lot of people say, oh, you know, it just, it feels so spongy and, you know, soggy on, on all the suspension and I, I disagree I don't think it feels that bad you know I mean it definitely doesn't feel sporty but obviously it's 2006 on 72,000 miles I imagine the turbo in realistic terms could probably do with replacing but why would you bother on a car for this value and the reason why I say that is because when I put my foot down waiting 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 oh there we go there's a bit of power <laughs> So the turbo isn't very quick anymore. I don't know whether they were quite slow from factory, but again, you do not buy this sort of car because you want instant torque, instant turbo. So, you know, there is that. You're not going to get in it and, you know, accelerate everywhere because, well, particularly a car that probably has never had a turbo replacement. It is quite slow, it is quite delayed, but I still like it. It's still my little Saab and I love it. 
all the switches on the interior work except the cup holder. Now I know the cup holder is meant to be built very well on these subs, but my one is actually broken. I press it and it just falls out and I'm not going to do it now because I'll have to fit it back together. But yeah, I was quite surprised about that because people rave about you know, the cup holders and how they still work after 20 years. Mine doesn't. Mine does not work. So there we go Saab, you should have built this car's cup holder a little stronger. But really, I mean, let's be honest, a car of this age, all I can complain about is the fact that the cup holder doesn't work. That is damn impressive. For a car with so many mechanical moving parts, you know, just to be able to talk about the cup holder is just, that's crazy. A Saab is a sort of car that you just can't break. You know, these engines are, they're designed incredibly, incredibly in depth by Saab. They just, they spent so much time, so much goddamn money on, you know, designing these cars from the ground up that these cars will go on forever. You know, you could buy one of these and not do any maintenance and run it into the ground. Although I really hope that you don't because Saab, Saab is a dying breed now and, you know, their heritage needs to be protected and I think people need to look after their Saabs, but if you wanted to, you could always run one into the ground and it probably wouldn't need very much work doing to it because these cars are dependable as old wood. So if you are considering getting a Saab, yes, get a Saab, get one while, you know, while they're still on the road, while they're still not ancient cars, get one now, the time is right. A car of this age is cheap. You know, just, just get a Saab. Now, some people might have a preference over petrol and diesel, fair enough. You know, as long as it's a good car, it has some service history, uh, you know, I think you're not gonna go wrong with a petrol or a diesel. The diesel will get you higher miles per gallon, and, you know, it does seem very economical from the maybe 100 or so miles that I've done in this one so far. So, I would probably actually recommend the diesel over the petrol, even though I've never driven the petrol, but, I think the turbo diesel, the 1.9, just, it feels like a good engine, it feels bulletproof, it feels reliable, it feels dependable. You know, I, I don't think you, you could really go wrong with one of these. You're looking for a convertible that can also cruise, and you know, you're on a budget, Saab 9.3, turbo diesel, all day. This will go down the motorway, this will take you to the beach, and once you get to the beach, you can enjoy yourself. Go for a Saab. So on that very Saabi sort of note, I want to thank you all very much for watching and I hope you will join me for my next review, hopefully uh, sometime soon in the future. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Goodbye.